Oh, I'm heartbroken and I'm scared. I want her home safe. Every Father's Day, she's never missed calling me. And that's when I really knew it was bad because I didn't hear from her. That was the father of missing person Lauren Brittany DeMalo. And you heard from him. He figured out something was wrong on Father's Day because Father's Day came and went and he didn't get the usual phone call that he would get from his daughter. It's time to turn on the searchlight for Lauren DeMalo. Welcome to another episode of Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here today. Before we get into today's case, I want to let you guys know we are taking next week off for the holiday. No case cracked, no searchlight, and no brain scratch. However, we are running Three Men and a Mystery. The season finale will drop on Monday. All right, let's start looking at this case, starting with NamUs, Lauren Brittany DeMalo, a white Caucasian female missing from Cape Coral, and that's in Florida. Uh, she was 29 years old at the time that she went missing. She is now 30 years old. Date of last contact, June 19th, 2020. She stands somewhere between five feet and five feet, two inches tall, weighs between 95 to 115 pounds. For circumstances of disappearance, she was last seen on June 19th at her apartment complex in Cape Coral, believed to have been returning from a nearby park. For hair color, it notes that she has blonde or strawberry hair, um, but it does have dark roots as well. You can kind of see it in this photo a little bit and in other photos that you'll see of her. Past shoulder length, uh, light brown kind of at the tips, and then it gets darker and has dark roots. She has brown eyes. For tattoos, we've got a very distinctive tattoo. Here's actually a photo of it. Uh, it says Namaste, and it's written um, down the right side of her abdomen. Uh, she's also got another one, which is NY, and that is on her pelvis. And then she has rosary beads tattooed around her ankle. For clothing and accessories, they don't have anything here noted. Um, we're going to find some descriptions on that as we get into the news stories and a very important consideration with a particular piece of clothing as we continue through that. Uh, for transportation, no information is entered. Uh, apparently, Lauren did not have a vehicle. For images and documents, a uh, couple of different shots of her, a shot of the tattoo, a shot of the missing poster, um, but that is about all we have there. Of course, the contact information that you need will be in the description box below, and that does include the case number, so you can use that if you're calling in a tip. It's always helpful for getting it to go to the right place. Cape Coral is a city located in Lee County, Florida, United States, on the Gulf of Mexico. The city's population estimate was over 194,000 people for 2019. It's also got an area of 120 square miles. Very large area. Cape Coral is the largest city between Tampa and Miami. And if you see the photo here, you can kind of get a sense of there are numerous waterways that are actually running through Cape Coral. You can see all the kind of dark blue lines that are jagging. These are waterways that are actually going through the neighborhoods and through the town. So um, missing persons cases, you know, I'm always very aware of what's going on with the water situation in that local area here. This is kind of a nightmare for, for a missing persons case because there are so many different water channels um, but let's go ahead and continue with the details, starting over at news-press.com. Lauren Brittany DeMalo was last seen June 19th, and they're giving the particular address here, 4927 Coronado Parkway, apartment number one, and was reported missing two days later. Her purse was found June 19th, so the same day that she goes missing, by a citizen at Four Freedoms Park, and then they have an address for the park. I'll show you a map of this soon a place that she was known to visit often. Her cell phone was in her apartment. And we've already got like two or three points that I want to talk about just based off this information. But uh, the five foot, 110 pound woman is a frequent walker in the area and does not own a car. She's last seen wearing a t-shirt 
and shorts. Not a very strong description, but we've got a little something. T-shirt and shorts. And I'm I'm just I'm confused right off the bat because I kind of feel like we're finding the items backwards. Like it would make a little more sense to me if her purse was left at home and her cell phone was found at the park, particularly when you see how close here's her home and it's a seven minute walk from there to the park. Um, you know, I, I can kind of imagine that if you're just going for a little local walk like that, which I understand that, uh, apparently she liked to go to four freedoms park, um, to meditate in particular. Uh, but that also might throw my cell phone theory right out the window as well. Cause it could be that if she was going there to meditate, that she didn't want her cell phone with her. I know some people do guided meditation, so maybe they would want their cell phone with them, but other people don't, and they might not want the distraction of the phone or for it to ring or something along those lines. Um, being so close to where she lived, I could I could easily imagine leaving those types of personal items at home and maybe just even taking her apartment key with her and then going down to the park. But we've got this kind of I don't know. I'm, I'm a little unsettled about this. Why is her purse found over here? Her cell phone is still back here. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Of course, moving a purse is very easy. Um, if, if this is a situation where we're talking about some information or items being staged to kind of lead investigators in a, in a off direction, uh, much easier to move a purse than to move a cell phone. Cause if you move a cell phone, you've got records of that. Um, you know, you've got GPS information, you've got cell phone towers. This area is pretty close. I don't know if you would literally hit a separate cell phone tower, but certainly GPS information would show this walk. And if you didn't want to show that that cell phone was moving at a particular time, maybe it would be best to leave it where it was. And, um, just to be perfectly clear, yes, I am alluding to the fact that perhaps something could have happened to her at home. Maybe the purse was brought out here to throw things off. And we've got other information that might lead us to believe that someone could be trying to kind of mess around with the investigation on that front a little bit. That's the only reason why I'm bringing it up. But we'll get into that more as we roll in through the articles. Over at winknews.com. From June 29th, 2020, Cape Coral Police Department believes 29-year-old Lauren DeMolo is in danger. Paul DeMolo flew in from California to help search for his daughter. It's sort of inexplicable why she's missing, said Master Corporal Phil Mullen with CCPD. He also said they have no leads to follow. Uh, he also said they don't have any clear signs of foul play or anything like that. So that would lead me to believe they probably checked her apartment uh, and didn't see that it looked like a fight happened in there or didn't find you know something that suggested that some type of violence occurred to her in that particular spot. They looked at the park, I'm sure, probably didn't see uh, any signs of violence there. So they're kind of caught in terms of, well, we don't understand what's going on with this case. We don't have clear signs of foul play, but strange for her not to call her father on father's day she's missing for a prolonged period of time at this point her personal items are being left behind it, it, it sounds like there's something to be concerned about here uh and i'm thankful let me just say right off the bat i'm thankful that this particular police department is responding in this way because we cover so many cases where they don't we cover so many cases where they have these same oh yeah we found the, the uh purse yeah, we found the cell phone, but hey, we can't say that there's any foul play. So we're, we're really not, you know, flagging this as anything other than a missing persons case here. They're kind of pushing on it a little more. Um, they actually, I believe, changed the status of this to an endangered case very, very quickly, sp specifically because of that. Um, Paul, her father, hopes anyone who might have something to do with her disappearance or information about it will come forward. Lauren's dad told us she's the young mother of, of a five-year-old little girl. Uh, and of course, if you are someone that has information about this case, description box below, everything you need is down there, even if you need to call in uh, an anonymous tip on this case. She's a mother. She's a sister. I believe she has five siblings. She's like one of the kindest people. She'd give you the shirt off her back. Just let her come home, her father said. 
Over at Fox 4, a little more information. Her father says it's unlike her to have no contact with friends or family for 10 days. She's my oldest daughter. It is hard for me as a father to imagine that my daughter just disappeared. She's sociable. She has a big tattoo on her side that says Namaste. She worked two jobs until COVID, and she's working another job at North Fort Myers at a Taco Bell, he said. Someone trying to make ends meet in a very tough year, and um, you're going to hear this family not only facing this disappearance, this family is facing just some terrible, terrible occurrences on top of the usual stuff or I don't know if it's maybe more appropriate to say the unusual stuff that 2020 has given to us all. Uh, but continuing with another article at WINK News, investigators are working to trace the steps of a young mother who seemed to vanish into thin air. Paul admits his daughter's gone through some tough times, but has been on the straight and narrow since she lost custody of her child two years ago. Lauren has a young daughter of five years old who lives up north with her paternal grandmother. She didn't want that for her life anymore, Paul said. No matter what it was, she always knew she could reach out to me. June 19th, Lauren's live-in boyfriend was reportedly the last person to see her. That same day, her purse was found at Four Freedoms Park. A man we saw talking to police didn't want to be interviewed on the record, but told us that the day before, Lauren asked him about available apartments, saying she, quote, wanted to get out of the situation she was in. Okay, so we've got a couple of pretty important pieces falling into this story. Uh, Live-in boyfriend, I believe they've been together for four years, if I recall correctly. Uh, and now we have a stranger interviewed by a news source, but they won't give their identity, but saying that she's basically going around the local area asking about other places to live because she wants to get out of a situation that she's in. Sounds like there might be some trouble in the relationship here. Um, something I think we have to be aware of in a case like this. We're going to get to her boyfriend's official story. We're also going to hear a quote from him a little bit later. So I don't want to push too far into that yet. But um, with a case like this, it's certainly a consideration. I know law enforcement is looking in that direction as well. Um, he said he saw her again the next day. This is the stranger uh, on June 19th around 8 a.m. And he waved at her as she was walking along the route from the park to her apartment. So we know that on the day she goes missing, she definitely does go to the park. And uh, she's walking from the park back to her apartment. This is part of what's given me some trouble in terms of the purse. She goes to the park. She leaves her purse there and then just walks home. Someone spots her walking home. Like, why would she have left her purse there? Something so important. I don't know if her trip to the park that morning is how the purse gets to the park. Uh, it signals to me that she's scared of this man, her father, Paul, said. I have no choice but to think the worst right now. So he's kind of taking this information about the boyfriend, about the comment that she's made to this other person saying she wants to get out of a situation. And he's drawing a pretty straight line. You know, sounds like something's going on between her and the boyfriend here. And he's thinking the worst. CCPD told us the reason they elevated Lauren's case to endangered is because when someone disappears voluntarily, they take their belongings, a wallet, a phone. In this case, she did not. Uh, moving on to another article, and a thank you to WINK News for being all over this story. This one posted July 3rd, 2020. New clue. The family was checking the routes that Lauren normally traveled. Her family went to the park, and they found her shirt. Right here, down right in here, said Lauren's sister, Cassie Carey, at the shoreline where her sister went every day. She and her other sister's boyfriend found the shirt together. We ran over to it, and it was this burgundy lace shirt that Lauren commonly wore, she said. When we spotted it, we took a look at it and compared it to photos that she was in. So it's a very distinguished, it, it has a pattern on it. It's lace. It's not just like your typical t-shirt. It's very obvious that it was one of hers. It's panic. It's oh my God, how did this get here? Because we've been frequenting this park a lot. We've been through this park probably two to three times a day, every day for the last week and a half, said her sister. Lauren's sister called the police to turn the shirt over to them as evidence. Um, 
Yeah, so this is almost two weeks, I believe, after her disappearance. Family's been all over this area. Park, obviously a big focus because we have the purse that's found there. And despite the fact that they're going through that park multiple times a day for multiple days, now this shirt has shown up there. Um, and this is another part of the reason why I'm wondering if evidence is being planted here. And I'm not the only one. There's there's other people that are going to weigh on this case as we go through the articles here. Uh, but even before I saw their analysis, my warning flags were up all around this. Um, it seems to me like someone could be trying to draw police's attention to that particular park or that particular area of water. And like I showed you guys at the start of this episode, there's a lot of other water in that area. And I'm worried that um, police resources are, are being kind of pulled by their nose for that particular area. And it has nothing to do with where she is. Um, but let's continue. Um, just to give you guys a little sense, I kind of took a look around because obviously one of the other thoughts here is, was she depressed about something that was going on in her life? We know sounds like she had a little bit of a rough go for a while, lost custody of her child, could possibly be in a relationship where she, she isn't really happy. Is there some possibility that she didn't want to live any longer? Um, would there be some bridges around this area that would make sense for that shirt to show up in that water source. And here's one of the bridges. It, it just, it doesn't really make sense. I've looked at several of them around this area. Um, the water line and where the land level is, they're so close to each other that I really can't find a reasonable one uh, that makes sense that, hey, this is a point where, you know, maybe for some reason she could have jumped off this particular location. Uh, and, and that item wind up in this basin. It's, it's not working for me, uh, very logically. If I actually look at the area and kind of look at the areas where there's a piece of road that's running over, um, a water source, this one at least is a little bit high, but you can see they've got a pretty strong fence. And I don't, I just, I don't think that amount of height is, um, I, I don't, I don't think that that would work. I mean, even if you do look at that particular bridge, look at the path that this shirt would have had to have taken to get back to the basin. It's just, it really, it's not holding up for me. Uh, and this waterway over here, or this this area um, where the road goes over the waterway, this is the first one I showed you guys. I mean, it's just, it's, it's not possible. So unfortunately, police tell the public, uh, hey, we're not getting any tips on this case. The tips that we are getting about sightings of her, we're looking into them and they, they're turning out to not be Lauren. Thankfully, the community starts pulling together to help with this case also. Over at fox4now.com, community members search. Southwest Florida Helping Hands coordinated the search efforts, dividing people to search several surrounding locations where DeMullo was last seen. They knocked on doors, posted flyers, and searched for any clues to bring Lauren home. DeMullo's sister says she's thankful to see the outpour of community support. I just want to thank everyone that helped with that effort as well. I think it's amazing that there's organizations like this that pull together and help these families. Uh, quote, People from the community are coming out and reaching out and donating their time, and I'm just so grateful for it, said Lauren's sister, Cassie. And uh, that organization is not the only one. Over at WINK News, we hear about a man here named Jim Edgar. Jim Edgar is a captain and owner of Sand Dollar Shelling on Marco Island. He doesn't know Lauren or her father or her sister, but he does know they're in pain. Quote, it's not really about having to know the person or be personally connected to them. It's about being personally connected to the story and the horrificness of it, he said. So he got in touch with Crime Stoppers and decided that their reward needed a boost. He kicked in an additional $5,000. Uh, typical Crime Stoppers rewards are usually $1,000 to $2,000. I think in her case, they had even put it up to three. But Jim Edgar here stepped up, added an additional five to that to bring her reward up to a total of eight. Uh, over at another Fox 4 Now article, Southwest Florida Crime Stoppers say they haven't gotten many tips in the case of missing woman Lauren DeMolo. So we got the police saying that. We've got Crime Stoppers saying that. 
Her sister found a shirt that belongs to her in the sand at Four Freedoms, a strange twist in this case, according to private investigator Walt Zalisco. And keep this PI in mind. His, he's going to circle back at the end of this story. That area was thoroughly searched days before, and the search just turns up right there on the sand, he said perplexed. Now, he's not investigating the case at the time of this article, but he questions whether or not her shirt was planted at the park and the crime scene is actually somewhere else. Let's say there is a suspect in this case and he wants to throw police off their investigation. He may have come back and put that shirt there, he said. Uh, I certainly think so. I mean, if you think about a case like this and you have an item like that found, of course, there's going to be new search efforts that are going to be directed to that. And what I'm concerned about, kind of to Zalisco's point, is if you take an item like that, like her purse was found in the park, right? We didn't hear that her purse was found in the water. So they're not going to roll out a bunch of dive teams and stuff like they might have a few divers go out and just kind of check the local area, but it's not going to be a, a big effort on that front. Now, if Zalisco's theory here is accurate, we've got this new item that's actually found on the water's edge, which would kind of elude you or, or bring you down the chain of thought of, uh, yeah, maybe we should be doing more on water searches there. And now those resources are going to be hitting an area that might not be correct. So if you are someone that is a suspect in this case, not only do you have them looking in the wrong area, you might have them tying up their resources that they need in to use in the right area. So effectively, if they're water searching that area, they're not water searching somewhere else where you may know that she is. Cape Coral Police Department says divers have searched for Damalo in the water near the park, not yielding much more evidence. Uh, another article from WINK News and here is a photo of Lauren, and her boyfriend is here as well. His name is Gabriel Pena. He spoke to WINK News about what he thinks happened to his girlfriend. I don't think she left on her own because she would have taken at least some clothes or her toothbrush or her makeup, he said. Pena recently was brought in by Cape Coral Police Department to take a polygraph test, and he claims that he passed. Police will not confirm this test result, nor will they say if Pena is a suspect. Now, I've got a little clip I want to play here uh, where you can hear it directly from his mouth. I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm scared. I'm not scared because I, I, don't, I ain't doing anything, but I'm just worried that something really did happen. So he says he's worried. He says he's scared, but... He has to specifically point out he's not scared because of because I didn't do anything. He says he last saw Lauren that Friday morning when he left for work. Um, so obviously, in terms of the investigation, very easy thing to track down, find out where he works, find out if there's a way to prove he was actually there from what time to what time. But that's part of the problem we have here, too, is we don't have a solid time of when her disappearance actually happens. He could have gone to work. Uh, he could come home for lunch. I mean, there's all kinds of different opportunities. Who knows what type of work he does? Maybe he's out and about regularly and he could have stopped at home. Um, but back to the information that he's giving to reporters, he does have a theory. His theory is that she went out with one of her friends. Her friend got her all messed up on drugs. And I don't know what after that, he said. Interesting. Uh, so here is a picture of the two of them. And over at Fox 4 Now, the search continues for a missing Cape Coral woman on her birthday. Family and friends of Lauren DeMolo shared happy birthday messages on social media with the hashtag bring Lauren home for her 30th birthday. One tip that made its rounds on Facebook was posted by a woman referencing the feeling she and a few medium friends had about Lauren's possible location. The post detailed a four-door red car, alligators, and high vegetation as a description to where they believe Lauren might be found. Former police chief turned private investigator Walter Zalisco says tips like this are not generally helpful to detectives. Uh, and here's some of the posting you can see. It says in reference to Lauren DeMolo, who's been missing since June 19th, several of my medium friends and I have been discussing this. We all came up with the same feeling. 
we see a tall, dark brown hair, possibly Spanish male who drives. And let me just point out, guys, uh, the article, I go through them in order of date typically. So a number of days uh, before this, we literally had the information about her boyfriend come out. Um, four door Japanese type of car who took her. We see alligators around her with high vegetation, believe that her shirt found was planted there. So do I, um, anyway, uh, back to the detective's comments. There's a lot of Japanese cars out there, red ones. Most people may have dark hair and we're in Florida. Everything is alligator infested here. So that's kind of a general statement. That's not really specific said Zalisco. And I just want to remind you guys about, um, the Michelle Parker case. It's actually nine years uh, I think on the day that you're watching this, actually maybe the day before when I'm recording it, uh, nine years ago that she disappeared. Her family, I interviewed them on the channel, told me a very similar story that basically um, they were told that Michelle would be found near palm trees. And that case is also in Florida. And they were like, palm trees and sand? I mean, come on, we're, we're in Florida. Um, so I've always struggled with this ever since I've started looking into these cases. Whenever I see information from mediums that comes forward, we even did an episode of crime after crime where I specifically worked trying to find a case where I could actually validate that information from a medium helped solve the case. And I couldn't, um, but here we have a very similar situation to what I heard from Michelle's family, uh, about information that is kind of easy to assume for that particular area that's being sent into them like it's like it's a tip of some kind. If you want to hear more about the Michelle Parker case, uh, I'm going to be doing an episode of Seriously Mysterious about that. It'll be airing when we come back from our break. Um, so if you're not familiar with this case, you really want to check that out. It's, uh, it's about a woman that goes on people's court uh, and has a dispute with her ex-fiance and the day that it airs, she's going over to drop off the twins at his house and she disappears. A very, very troubling case on many fronts, but new episode on Seriously Mysterious coming out about that. Let's get back to this case. Another article at WINK News. Paul DeMalo's daughter has been missing for more than a month, but he's not given up hope. I will not give up, he said. I hope nobody else gives up on the search for my daughter. It's exhausting, he said. I've been here almost a month now. Not a day has gone by where I haven't been out either talking with people, searching for where she could possibly be. And then, of course, her birthday had just passed. And he said that was probably the worst day of all this. And keep in mind, uh, this is this article is written 32 days after she's gone missing. Uh, we're now coming up on over five months of, of her being missing. Lauren's father does feel they're closer to getting answers. He's also hired a private investigator. My biggest hope would be that my daughter is found alive and found safe, he said. I will not leave Florida until I have all the answers and this is solved. In August, NBC starts releasing some coverage on this case as well. According to Lauren's sister, Cassie Carey, Police were able to track down the last time her cell phone was used. Just after 10 in the morning, Lauren, or someone using Lauren's phone, tried to video chat her boyfriend on Facebook from the apartment. Gabriel did not answer. Lauren doesn't leave her house without her phone, according to her sister, Cassie. Uh, we did find a shirt. It is here at the police department, explained Cape Coral lead detective Nick Jones. We do believe that it's hers. I don't have anything confirming 100%, but we do believe that it's hers. Now that Lauren has been missing for seven weeks, major crimes investigators are looking into the possibility of homicide. I think she was murdered, her father said. I think something happened. Until I have actual evidence that it was something else, that's my belief. Every detective in my unit, there are nine of us, have interviewed multiple, multiple people, Detective Jones said. There isn't any one person I wouldn't rule out right now. Lauren's boyfriend said he didn't hear from her after he left to go to work. He claims he didn't get a call or text from her that morning, despite phone records saying otherwise, according to her family. So once again, looks like we've got some pretty strong stares coming from her family in his direction. 
Back to a quote from him, maybe she was looking for an apartment to get out of where we were at, he said. So I was thinking she was looking for an apartment around, and I don't know, maybe someone took advantage of that and that was it and never came back. That's my theory. Gabriel said she wasn't using drugs and wouldn't harm herself. Her family agreed. That is a complete 180 from the previous comment that he gave uh, just a matter of weeks before this, where his theory at that time was she went running off with some friend and, and using drugs. So now he's saying she wasn't using drugs. Detective Jones confirms his case is not cold and his team has had a lot of help from the community. Do you have any reason to believe she is still alive? Asked a producer directly to the detective. And he said, I can't answer that. Her boyfriend, Gabriel, said he hasn't been able to take down any pictures of her in the apartment they shared, hoping she is still alive for her daughter's sake. I love you to the moon and back, he cried. Me, her, her daughter, we always said that. We love you to the moon and back. And not to be able to hear her voice or see her, it just hurts. Did you have anything to do with Lauren's disappearance? The producer asked him. No, I got nothing to do with it, he insisted. Another article at WINK News, Southwest Florida Crime Stoppers said Wednesday that they will be distributing lawn signs to aid in the search. They wanted to get 125 signs out in high visibility areas. Her father believes someone out there knows something, so he's glad the signs went up. Somebody has to know something about this. You know, my daughter didn't just vanish, he said. Several volunteers, as well as Damalo's father, put the signs out. Uh, another thing I just wanted to touch on is I saw an interview with him where he was talking about the stretch between where her apartment was and where the park is. And apparently there's no cameras in that particular area. They actually went looking for cameras very early on. So they don't even have good evidence now, at least photographic evidence of her going to the park normally or coming home normally that day. Keep in mind, we do have that one unnamed witness supposedly seeing her that morning heading home from the park. Uh, and now in terms of the time frame, we can put together that her phone is having activity around 10 a.m. where it seems to be trying to call her boyfriend's phone, but he doesn't answer. But then we've also got that information from the family that her phone is showing that there was text messages and phone calls between the two of them. And he's saying that there wasn't just, just a lot of strangeness trying to put this together. And for me, it's really making me think very hard about the direction of that boyfriend as well. Another article at Fox for now, friends and family members are planning a motorcycle ride and fundraiser for Lauren. All the money is going to go to crime stoppers to increase the reward and hopefully incentivize someone to come forward says family friend and event organizer, Danielle Langavin. The event will be held at 11 a.m. on October 3rd. There will be a live DJ, silent auction, 50-50 raffle, food, drinks, and a dunk tank to provide family fun and raise money. The night will close out with a candlelight vigil for Lauren at sundown. Uh, so they do actually wind up doing that. And the money, actually, they decide they're going to use it in a little bit of a different way. Um, we'll, we'll get to that. For the past 139 days, Cape Coral Police Department has been in charge of locating DeMalo and finding out what happened to her, but hasn't reported any advances. After pleas from the family to bring in outside agencies such as Lee County Sheriff's Office and the FBI to help, Paul DeMolo, Lauren DeMolo's father, is hiring a private investigator. On October 3rd, the fundraiser helped reward money be raised, but... They raised $6,100 and Paul decided he wanted to talk to the organizers of the event and he convinced them they need to take $4,500 of those proceeds and hire a private investigator and guess who they hired. Yeah, the same private investigator that we've been mentioning on the previous articles who had already been honestly watching this case and commenting on it publicly. Uh, they pulled him on to officially investigate here former police chief also. I can't thank the community enough, Paul DeMolo said, stating that the event was fantastic and he never expected so many people to come out and support his daughter. The reward money for any information leading to the location of Lauren now sits at about $9,000. So 
even with hiring the private investigator, they were still able to push a little more money over to Crime Stoppers, and now that reward is at $9,000. That is the latest of the news on this case. There are a few other places where you can look for more information. Web Sleuths has a pretty good thread going on this. It's currently running at about 18 pages long. There is a Twitter account. Um, at Lauren DeMolo, which is Bring Lauren Home is the name of it. Uh, you can follow them for updates. And there's also a Facebook group that is private, so you have to be accepted to it. But it is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Bring Lauren Home. Of course, I'll have a link to that in the description down below. And they are running a fundraiser. It looks like so far they've raised an additional $5,000 here. They're aiming for $7,000. Um, I know that private investigators are not cheap. I know that basically the $4,500 is probably to retain him, but then there's hourly work that's going to happen and it's going to eat into that fairly quickly. So um, I want to help this family with that effort. I want to make sure they have all the resources that they need. I know Paul has been out uh, several times from California, uh, you know, traveling is not free. So obviously he's incurring all kinds of expenses. So on top of myself and my amazing supporters on PayPal and Patreon, I'm going to make a donation to this GoFundMe just as soon as I'm done filming today's episode. And if you'd like to join me, I'll have a link to it in the description box down below. There is some other information I wanted to touch on before we end today's video about what's going on with the family and what they're facing. The family continues to suffer loss. On October 15th, Lauren DeMolo's mother, Laura Decker, died from COVID. Essentially, she was hospitalized because of other medical issues. In the hospital, she got COVID-19 and passed away. Then four days later, Lauren DeMolo's stepmother, Tracy DeMolo, also died. Over the past five months, Paul DeMolo has been traveling between his home in California and Cape Coral. He expects to return to Cape Coral this month. In December, they will have another event, Lauren's Way Home, where they will meet at Freedom Park to tie pink ribbons around trees in the park and trees around her home. So another event coming up in December, if you would like to help show the family your support for the search for Lauren as well. Well, Brain Scratchers, this is where I turn it over to you. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of indicators pointing in a very strong direction, um, but we're, we've also got some big missing pieces. It'd be very different for me if we understood what was going on with the boyfriend's job. Did the police verify that that's where he was? Uh, as for the lie detector test, I know there's a lot of you out there that don't trust the results of lie detector tests. There's also the fact that um, police, there's nothing that legally holds them to um, have to tell you the truth about the results of lie detector tests. So information that is coming from someone that has taken the test, oh, they told me I passed, that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, so I don't know what's going on with this case, but I'm pretty suspicious about that. I'm very suspicious about how the purse got to that location, but more how the shirt got to that location and then seeing what happened around that with all of a sudden dive teams and stuff being focused on that area in an area that has this much water. Um, I'm very, very concerned that she's somewhere else and their attention is being focused in that in that area specifically to burn up their resources. But I want to know your thoughts. Please uh, share them with us in the comments down below. I ask as always that we please remain respectful. I'm, there's a very good chance we're going to have family members uh, that find this video and I want to make sure that the info down there is helpful to them, might give them different considerations that maybe haven't been thought of yet, maybe different directions to look in or different steps to take. So let's try to focus in that direction with all this. and. Uh, Paul, I'm, I'm really sorry that you're facing this. It looks like your family is facing so much with everything that's happened this year. Um, but then to have this on top of all that, very, very terrible. But please know that there's a lot of us out here that are here to help support your efforts. Uh, keep raising exposure. And we're not going to forget about Lauren. We're not going to stop talking about Lauren uh, until we figure out what's going on with this case. So there's a bunch of us here with you. 
All right, Brain Scratchers, uh, another reminder, no shows next week, but we will return on Monday, November 30th. And of course, we still have a Brain Scratch coming up on Friday. Uh, Once again, thank you to my supporters on PayPal and Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit lordandarts.com where you can sign up for PayPal, Patreon, or buy merchandise. All of it helps me keep things going around here, trying to help these families, doing it always with limited commercials and making donations just like we made today. So I appreciate each and every one of you that helps me in that. Take care, everyone. I'll be back on Friday with a brand new episode of Brain Scratch right here on the Lord and Arts channel.